guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I thought I'd show you how I did these lovely mandalas. This one I'm showing you here is done on an embroidery machine, but they can also be done um, with ordinary stitching and satin stitch on a normal sewing machine. But the lovely thing about these is how the colour is applied. So I'm just going to set up and I'll pop back and be with you in a moment. Right, so here on the table I've got my design and you can use any design that you like, you can draw it yourself and, and there are plenty around um, in pattern books that you can pick up. And what I need to do is I need to get that onto my fabric next. The fabric that I'm using is a cotton fabric and what I've done is I've laid it over the top of this design and I've not traced all the design off, I've just laid it over the top and chosen which parts I want to trace off and that's what I've actually traced off from that design. It's a lot more simple than the original but this one I'm going to actually do on my sewing machine and I'm going to do it with a, a, an ordinary straight stitch. So what I would do here is I would set my sewing machine up um, with straight stitch, black thread in it and I would just take my time and I would sew up all of these lines, come back over the top of my stitching to get myself into position to do the next one and I would gradually work my way around there um, and when the whole design is done um, it's ready for the next stage. Now what I haven't mentioned is what I've marked it out with. I've marked the actual design out with a friction pen and a friction pen is a wonderful thing because if you miss any of these lines while you are sewing on the sewing machine do not worry because once you've stitched it you take this to the iron and you iron it and all these lines will disappear and you will then end up with quite a neat looking piece of work obviously depending how long it takes you to do and how much effort you're going to put into staying on the lines. Right, once you've done that, you get back something that looks like this. So this is one that I did earlier and I did this with free motion. So it doesn't matter whether you've got feed dogs up or feed dogs down, um, you can do it whichever way you're comfortable. So mine's a little bit more rustic because when I'm free motioning, I do have a little bit of a habit of adding in some extra things while I'm en route. So this one's been stitched out and when I stitched it, I also put behind it a piece of violin so that I, I've had plenty for the machine to hold on to and I didn't gather it up. You can also, if you own an embroidery unit, why not feed the information into your embroidery machine and let the embroidery machine chug out your design and then you're ready to go. So it works at all levels. You can either do it on an embroidery machine, you can do it free motion, or you can do it with your feed dogs up and general stitching. So once we've done all that, we're ready for the exciting bit, how to get the colour on. Right, so first of all, I need something to support the work so that I can drop my dyes on and let them disperse. So what I did was I took some black acrylic paint and a paintbrush and I actually painted the outside of a small hoop, okay? And then that comes up looking like this one here. Now, that is going to push, so when you've done your stitching, you need to put your stitching into a hoop. So I'm just popping that on there, and push, and it looks lovely and neat already. I'm then going to trim off the excess, but I'm gonna leave at least an inch around the edge, and you'll see why later. Right, now I'm ready for the fun. So how do we get these lovely colours to disperse? Well, we're going to use something called alcohol rubbing solution and we're going to use a syringe. And we're also going to use some Sharpie pens. I've got a lovely arrangement of Sharpie pens here. Um, generally, they're a, a, on a good deal when the kids are going back to school. So if you see some around, get yourself a collection. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick some nice bright colours and I'm just going to colour in certain areas, not all of it, because you want these to run, so you've got to give them space to run. So I'm just going to go around and colour in, pick out certain areas of the design, which I like the idea of being in orange. 
it's quite quick to do you don't have to be too um, fussy about it because they're going to run everywhere anyway um, it's just so nice watching them disperse out um, and seeing what happens as they go so there's my orange gone in uh, what other colour shall I use um, let's, what colours do I like oh, let's put some blue in I'm going to put some blue in there and the orange will mix with the blue as well. You've got no control over this. It's all completely random. We'll have some blue on those edge ones there. The art of it is, is not to colour the entire design in. As I said earlier, give the, the inks or the a place to run. Um, let's have, my favourite colour is this cerise. So we'll put a bit of this in here. It's lovely to sit and colour in. And the good thing is when you've got an embroidery unit on a machine, you can obviously stitch out quite a lot of these designs very quickly. Whereas if you're doing them the old fashioned way, it's going to take you time to actually get all these um, black mandalas stitched. I'm just going to put a little bit of pink around there. And then we're going to go for we're going to go for orange again on the oh no that's black with an orange lid we don't want that let's there we go we're going to put some orange down here now later on when this bit's done you can add sequins beads you can glitter them do all sorts of things with them they'd be ideal um, for sort of middles to quilts you could put some log cabin around them. Uh, and you can take them on much further than just doing one of these lovely mandalas but these little mandalas do look lovely I have them hanging up in the summer in the garden and they all twirl round and look really really stunning so there we go I've done my bit of colouring in so now I've got a syringe here which I'm going to syringe up some of the rubbing solution and then it's a matter of just dropping it on and seeing what it does. And you can't control this, you just have to go with it. But if you saw then, I started from the middle and went outwards. Now, you can sit and watch this, it's really quite fascinating to watch. But that will probably keep working for about five minutes. If you did decide at this stage you liked it, it was enough um, dispersion going on there, you could take it to the iron and iron it straight away and the, the iron will burn off the rubbing solution and it will stop it in its tracks. But I tend to walk away from mine and you can see here, I've got a lovely one here that I did the other day. I got up and went and made a cup of coffee and when I came back it had all dispersed out to the edges um, and I just think that is really lovely. And I've got other ones um, that you know they do all do their own different thing you know I wasn't too keen on the way this had worked here but you add a few sequins and it looks stunning and again this side a few sequins and it really brings it together I mean I've used black sequins but you could use gold and you could use some glitter on here and they just come up lovely every time so there you go that's all there is to it guys it's uh, it's stitching the design first and foremost um, then you just, just need your sharpie pens and you colour in and then you need some alcohol rubbing solution which you drop on and then just leave it alone and let it do what it wants so there you have it, look at this, a wonderful twirling mandala, so easy to make, there's no control on it, you just let the die do what it wants to do and it's all from a set of Sharpie pens, a little bit of stitching and some alcohol rubbing solution. Mm -hmm.